episode 70. I like to share my recipe and my style and everything with other people because uh, to take care of our tradition, we have just to share. Hey, everybody, this is the Just Forking Around podcast, where every week we raise our glass and toast to the beautifully insane, sexy world of food adventures. Expect a variety pack of guests every week. All have the most compelling stories. They are the brewers, the distillers, the authors, winemakers, farmers, vegan product makers, restaurateurs, top chefs, entrepreneurs. I mean, truly inspirational, motivational. This is ear ball riveting. So settle in and let's fork around. Forking around reminds me of my social media platforms that I would love to share with you. (laughs) At Forking Podcast, that is Instagram. So at Forking Podcast, website, justforkingaround.net. And Facebook is my personal page, Debbie.Salzberg. And if you're on the iTunes, enjoying the podcast, I would love, if you enjoyed the show, to subscribe, rate, and review. Much love. And now let's really get into this next episode. So I'm looking at my Facebook this morning, the, my Debbie.Salzberg. And you know how those memories pop up? And so the memory that popped up this morning was from two years ago when we were in Catalina. We had sailed across from Marina del Rey, which is an awesome sail. It takes about six or seven hours because it's not a direct tack. And we cross the shipping lanes, which can be pretty crazy because there's a big tankers coming through. You know, we're on this little 35 foot. uh, It's not little, it's nice, but it's not huge. (laughs) My only stretch is 35 feet. It's good size. So we cruise across and then usually get greeted by the dolphins, which is amazing. And then we go to two harbors, not to the Avalon. We go more to the chill side. And we moor and usually friends are there and we just spend the spend a few days. And it was July 4th weekend. And the picture reminded me because I had, it reminded me of why I started the podcast, how I had the time to start the podcast. Let me rephrase that. I, two years ago, had an injury on my left hand and I couldn't work. So I couldn't work in the, in restaurants. So, and that's what I've done my, pretty much my entire life along some other entrepreneurial endeavors, but pretty much food and beverage. So I had an accident with my left hand. I uh, broke a couple fingers and tore a tendon. So when you tear a tendon, it's really tricky to heal. So <laughs> I was told by the orthopedic surgeon that I can't, to keep my hand in the, the splint and for four months, I can't move my finger. And after four months, if I did at any time move my finger, I'd have to start the four month from that point. So I was like, damn, I want to get this four months over with straight four months, not like six months, four months. So during that time, it was summer, of course. And I was thinking, shit, I got to figure out, this is an opportunity to figure out maybe something else, another thing, a either a, a side hustle or a hobby or a project, just something else to do that maybe could potentially uh, generate some revenue or be something in a different industry than this hardcore restaurant business that I was in. So <laughs> this picture that from the memory is I have on my, my splinted finger, the cage from Veuve Clicquot Champagne. I use those cages. I'm not kidding. I took the cage off and put them over my finger, the my, especially my middle finger, which is actually funny, but to protect so the cat, the splint that was on there. So if you think about it, so the tip of the finger has a mad, as the mug shot of Madame Vuv. And it's just, just so reflective of why I started the podcast and how I started the podcast. So originally, this could be a whole episode, which I probably should do. Why I started the podcast had to do with uh, Madame Vuv, Vuv Coco, and her story, and maintaining the integrity of her story, which is getting very clouded, and history is being rewritten, and Champagne Charlie's kind of moving in, and the history is being rewritten. So I wanted to maintain that integrity. But on top of that, the Vuv Coco, I 
I used to drink a lot of Vuv. <laughs> and that cage protected my finger when I was on the sailboat. And I was, I'd be putt-putting around with, on the dinghy to bring the dog to shore. So it was just very helpful to have an extra cage. And it was brilliant because it was Vuv Quico protecting my finger, which is my middle left finger. So long story short, which was actually going to be an episode, I started the podcast because of Madame Vuv Quico. I had the opportunity to begin this journey or at least thinking about it and kind of putting everything in place when I had that time off after the injury I had four months. And yes, my finger healed so beautifully. They didn't think it was going to be so good. They told me my finger might be droopy or kind of droopy. I don't know. There's not a lot of difference between droopy and kind of droopy. I feel like droopy is droopy. <laughs> so anyways, now my finger is perfectly normal. It doesn't droop. <laughs> and I swear it was that Madame Boeuf cage. So that was what stirred up for me this morning when I was looking on my Facebook memory pictures. <laughs> I should, I'm going to put a link in there so you can see that. That's what we're going to do. So on the show notes, there'll be a link to, so you can see the, 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 what I'm talking about with the Madame Boeuf cage, because it is, it's actually a, a statement. I, I think that somebody was probably going to take that fashion statement and turn it into something. <laughs> Damn, I missed my calling. I should have start, done a Madame Vuv line of accessories and, and my podcast. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, so that's what happened with me this morning. And it's, as I sit here, it is July 4th coming in. And when I recorded this podcast, this awesome podcast number 70 with Alessandra Manas, founder of the SOAR Project, it was uh, the middle of June. And she is Italian. And she, when you go over to, and you almost know, when you are invited into uh, an Italian person's home, it's not just, here's a snack, or you're not just here, you want some water. I mean, she had a pitcher of Aperol Spritz, which is like my favorites, absolute favorite. And, and well, not even a glass, it was like a pitcher. And a spread. I mean, she baked, got up early that morning and baked me a quiche-like, pie. I mean, it was artichoke, freaking delicious. And then a nice dessert. And then of course there was the speck and the prosciutto and cheese and crackers. And we had lunch and it was, it was fabulous. It was, she's amazing. So who is Alessandra Magnus is maybe what you're wondering. Well, she is from Northern Italy and we dive in a lot in this episode about the different regions, the cuisine from those regions and the influences of the bordering areas and how those cultures kind of influence. For example, Fruia Venezia. <laughs> I'm not even going to say this right. I can't even say it. I can't say it like she says it. Fruia Venezia Giulia. Damn, I don't even think I nailed it. You know, I don't even, I'm not cheating, reading off of anything. I was going off of pure memory. But oh, Fruia Venezia Giulia. So it's located in the far northeast of Italy. And this is what's so cool. It's three different influences. So they have like Venezia is more Venice influence, right? And the Frui is more up north. So you have more of the Austrian influence. And um, you're just going to have to listen to find out more. <laughs> I could go on and on, but I don't, I don't like to give too much away. Uh, except try to paint the picture of what you're about to embark on. That's earball riveting. <laughs> uh, I, I really love the accents like Emilia Romana, uh, Frui Venezia Giulia. See, I can't even do it right. Uh, but hopefully by the end of this, this episode, you all be saying it fluently. So Alessandra Magnus, she came here a few years ago. Uh, she has an amazing accent. You can definitely understand her, her English. Um, I just find that Italians, it just has a very, um, it's attractive, it's sexy, the dialect. Um, I, I just, I thoroughly enjoy the Italian uh, dialect. Well, the English ver uh, dialogue from Italians. Uh, I could just listen to them talk all day. <laughs> so we recorded this episode in our home, like I said. Um, we didn't have any grappa to finish off. Good thing, because I did have to drive back. <laughs> Which should have been what, you know, how things are 30 minutes, but it takes like an hour and a half. That's, I have to always throw in the LA traffic. 
But I could tell you, I would drive over there anytime for any gathering that she has because this, the snacks that she made were amazing. So SOAR Project, let me get into that SOAR Project a little bit, S-A-O-R Project. She, Alessandra has great pop-up dinners. She can come to your home. Uh, her husband uh, works with her and they can create this whole spread, a whole meal, a whole experience, pretty much crafted however you want. They can be involved in presenting the courses, talking about the different ingredients and where she sources and what that means. So it can be this whole um, theatrical display, or she can just come and cook for your gathering. I mean, it can be a small gathering, a larger gathering. She also do these amazing community-driven pop-ups where 10 to 12 people, strangers, (laughs) well, some people know each other, but come together over food, community, and these people experience an authentic dinner, an authentic Italian dining experience. And I got to tell you, a lot of the people that have come together over this community table, this great table she has where she does a lot of her dinners, um, are still friends. Uh, Months and months and months, they do things together and hang out. So I love community coming together over food and drinks. So without further ado, please enjoy this episode with Alessandra Manas. Alessandra Mania, well, thank you so much for welcoming me into your amazing home. We're sitting at your, I would say, community table where you invite guests and have a have a delicious. Yes, we, we sometimes um, we start to open once a month. We open our uh, apartment, our house. We have a big table, and um, we have uh, like ten guests. They can try uh, our food and they can meet friends. So it's like um, we want to create uh, the um, situation of the Italian hospitality mm-hmm. that is very famous in Italy, so in the United States. So Because when we came free, uh, here, we asked two people, why you love Italy? Because everybody are crazy for Italians so crazy, in Italy. Right? <laughs> so for us, it was like a, a weird to say, why you love us? <laughs> you know? yeah. And everybody says, um, we love people, we love food, uh, we love hospitality. So at the beginning, we say, why? We cannot recreate the same situation in LA. That is kind of difficult to meet friends because the city is very big. And that's it. Then uh, why? And so that's where we're sitting. So yes. I'm, I'm so excited about our little spread here. I see a picture. I don't know. It looks to me like a spritzer. Spritz. It looks like a spritz. Yes. A spritz. It looks like a spritz. A spritz is a drink that we use to, to drink at happy hour. Um, aperitivo. Aperitivo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I came from northeast of Italy, very north, through Venezia Giulia. It's the region uh, uh, close to Austria and Slovenia and uh, Veneto. So we have the influence from the Venetian culture, but also from Aus- uh, the, Ven- the Austrian culture. So, Austrian culture, yeah, right. So influence influence from yeah. North Europe. Mm-hmm. And uh, the spritz is typical. So when you go out, uh, when you finish to work around 6, 6.30, <laughs> You go out with friends, uh, drink a spritz, and then everybody goes to dinner. Nice. I love that. Yes. So let's, I want to do a toast. So w- this is a beautiful wine glass. I'll have pictures on the... Is this an, a typical spritz, like white wine glass? Like, is this how you drink this? Yeah, we used to use white wine glasses. White glass. wine glasses. Okay. Yes, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to raise my spritz glass okay. to you, and I'm going to have you do the honors okay. of the toast. Salute. 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 <laughs> Cheers. I'm going to take a sip. It looks so delicious. It's made with um, white wine, sparkling wine. Oh, it's so good. Like Prosecco. We use oh, Prosecco b- b- because uh, the, re- the famous region of Prosecco is Veneto, especially uh, Valdobbiadene. Valdobbiadene. It's like yeah. 30 minutes from my house. Mm-hmm. So I use that. Uh, Prosecco, Aperol, and uh, sparkling water. And sparkling water. You know, yes. I was in Venice, the Veneto region, Venice. Yes, Venice. Mm-hmm. And they put an olive in there. Yes, we, we can use yeah, also the olive. The olive. That was a, yeah. So sometimes I'll go out and I'll get a spritz and I'll be like, can I have an olive? And people are yeah. like, what? And I'm like, it's like authentic Venice. <laughs> yes, with uh, olive or a slice of orange mm-hmm. or just it. There are two kinds of spritz. This is the red one because it's made with Aperol. But you can have also the white one. 
Uh, that it's just uh, Prosecco, so sparkling wine and um, sparkling water. Oh, really? Okay. Yes. So just... you can ask uh, red or white. Okay. <laughs> nice. I didn't know that. Okay. So Alessandra, I want to say Mania. Manias. Manias. Mm-hmm. So let's, let's talk about currently what it is that you do, mm-hmm. your current position, and then we'll talk a little bit the, the sour, sour. Sour project. Sour project. Okay, Sour project uh, was born like three years ago. Um, first with my husband and our friend, uh, chef, uh, Christian. And we opened this project just for fun because when we came here, it was strange for us that we couldn't find a recipe from our region and uh, especially traditional recipe. Uh, there are a lot of uh, good uh, restaurants uh, in LA, but um, it's... Uh, we see the same the same thing everywhere you oh, know you mean, so it's the same, yeah, same, the same, same, same recipes, dishes same, same style yeah. so uh, we say why we don't open like a concept we open a website a logo and uh, we try to teach uh, to people that there are existing other recipes uh, but very um, particular recipe uh, for example we cook uh, regional but Recipe, like antique recipe from the mountains. So I think that it's very difficult to find. Yeah. You need a very big culture to know it. Okay. And uh, also you have to experiment. <laughs> so <laughs> when we talk about, so S-A-O-R, the sour. 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 sour, sour. And yeah. that means, do you want to define uh, yes. what that means? Okay, sour is the... Uh, is the name of a recipe. So uh, sardine, the logo is uh, an onion with a sardine inside. Mm-hmm. That is a famous recipe from Venice. Uh, sardine in Sora, uh, you can find in Veneto and in Friuli. And uh, was the recipe that uh, the antique Venetian used uh, to prepare when we traveled with the boat on the sea for like uh, weeks and weeks. So it was preserved? They preserved the, 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 um, the fish with the onion and vinegar. Mm-hmm. So it has three meanings, a recipe, sardine and sour, the way to preserve uh, the food with the vinegar and uh, onions, yeah. and also mean uh, flavor. Flavor? Yes. Okay. Sour specific. means also flavor. So yeah. uh, we like the idea uh, of this because it's, uh, it's very, very popular in Veneto, in, in Venice. So what would be an example if I'm going to order... How would I see that on a on a menu, or is it just sardines, or is there a name of sardine in sour is the way to preserve it. Oh, sardine and sour. sour is the way to preserve it. Okay. So sour means onion and vegan, a vinegar. Okay. The how to preserve the... Oh, so it's the, the actual sardine that's the process yes. of how it's preserved. Yes, yes. Okay. So it's not like a dish. <laughs> but people, they used to go in Venice on in Veneto and uh, see our name, they recognize it. Oh, that's awesome. They say, oh, oh I, I ate that in, uh, yeah. when I went in Venezia. I mm-hmm. love that. That's yeah. great. So you talked a little bit about, in the beginning, about what inspired mm-hmm. you to start. Yes. It, it was this need, well, you started off for fun to bring mm-hmm. people together. Mm-hmm. Um, what is it developed into more? Is it more about preserving the integrity of the regional food or is it to... We started with the idea to preserve the integrity of the food, but also to share with the Americans a new recipe. So very, very original antique recipe that you cannot find in restaurants uh, or mm-hmm. maybe you, c- you can taste it just in Italy. Is it just fruit? I'm going to try to say Man- not as sexy. Uh, you say it really sexy. Friuli Venezia. Friuli Venezia Giulia. <laughs> say, can you say it slower? Friuli Venezia Giulia. Fru- Friuli Venezia Giulia. Giulia. Mm-hmm. I, can, I can read it and say it almost accurately. It's just when I try to say it, Friuli Friuli, okay, Friuli Venezia Giulia is one region with the three different identities. Three different identities? Yes. Friuli is um, uh, the culture more closer to the mountain and maybe the Austria tradition. Okay. So we, and it's a language and uh, a particular style of food. Venezia is uh, the south part of the same region with the, um, with most influence from Venezia, from okay. Venice culture. Venice. And Giulia is uh, close in the border to Slovenia. Oh, so yeah. the influence is from Slovenia. So in the same region, we speak one language that is uh, recognized like language and two different dialects. Wow. And you can find food from uh, 
the influence from Venezia, Austria and Slovenia. Everything in like uh, 30 minutes by car. <laughs> so that's so interesting. So that's, I love knowing that. So when I, this is, and this is Northern, Northern Italy. So I was looking up, so Northern Italy has like eight regions in a sense. There was mm-hmm. uh, the Piemonte, Liguria, Lombardia, Lombardia Emilia, Romana, <laughs> Veneto. So Frui, Venezia, Giulia, that was just a great definition. I didn't know it was like almost three divisions or it's not so famous like the other region it's famous for white, white wines. wine yeah everybody knows the fruity because the white wines from colio yeah that's very famous everywhere in the world right. but they don't know very well the region it's yeah. a very re- rich region uh, beautiful nature and also about uh, architecture you can find the uh, you can see the the influence from uh, north europe and you have a, and the menu too and the what in the menu too, so I can cook uh, uh, dishes that uh, they come with the influence from North Europe. Wow. Mm. So when I think about, I, I want to talk a little bit about the cuisine and, and the influences and what's available up there and up there <laughs> up in the North. I was reading a little bit about how, can we just say frui? Frui? Frui. Frui. There's, um, there's different, there's obviously the Central European influence, but there's a lot of... Um, specifics like spec is that from that region the others would be that there's a lot of barley does that make sense yes we make a risotto with barley Mm -hmm. so we'll go through those and then piccolit 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 is an amazing wine i love it it's unique just to that and that's a grape and it's a dessert wine it's a small grape very very difficult to to raise and to take care because it's very delicate the production is super small and uh, the one is very expensive. Yeah. And uh, you're asking about one that I really love it, maybe because I also am a woman. So <laughs> I like sweet <laughs> like because, things. So it's, it's delicious, right? It's, it's, del- it's, it's sweet. It's, it's sweet. It's like an after... after yeah, it's for dessert or after, after lunch. Uh, it's sweet, but uh, it's unique. And it's pi- piccolit? Piccolit. Like little? Piccola? Because the grape is it's very small. It's very small. And yeah. of course, it's so confusing in, with wines in Italy. Mm. Because it's either a grape or a region. So mm-hmm. piccoli is actually the grape. It's yes. not a region in yes. Fru- Fruili. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's ex- and it's DOCG. So it's the not the has that rating. Yes. But if we can have in future the occasion to go together, I want to show you how they produce it. Oh, really? It's amazing. So that it's like a very small production and uh, it's like a jowl for us. It's like a what? Jowl. Uh, Jewel. Jewel. Oh, it's like, no, <laughs> Jewel. Sorry. sorry. No, no, it's, I love your accent. It's funny because I'm still, lear- I, as I told you, I'm still learning English. And it's, you're doing my great. Accent, so. I mean, <laughs> you've been here for Little, more than two years. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's a short amount of time. So your English yes. is excellent. Thank you. And, and this is, this is a good time where I want to go back into a little bit more of the influences because I found it to be super interesting. Like the different. Okay. Uh, about spec, I tell you, but spec and prosciutto, the difference. Okay. Friuli Venezia Giulia is very famous for San Daniele Speck. Eh, excuse me, San Daniele Prosciutto. San Dan- prosciutto di San Daniele, you can okay. find also in LA. Yes, at Italy they had the... Yeah, it's in Friuli. Yeah. It came from my region. Okay. That's uh, very, very famous in everywhere in the world. because uh, And it's really good because uh, uh, San Daniele is a small place, small city. between. It's like a hill between a mountain, close to the mountain. Mm-hmm. And the hair is very good. So... This is why the prosciutto is really good okay. because uh, the the place, uh, the hair, uh, the grass, everything is really yeah, good the, in the area. The cult, so. the the, um, the the air, the the grass, so the crops because the, the pigs are gonna yes uh, eat they and eat what, how food. they're being raised. They eat good food. <laughs> they, they eat really good food. <laughs> so therefore, we eat good food. <laughs> and the spec, the influence of spec is from uh, Friuli and also from Trentino. Okay. It's very popular in Trentino. And the uh, speck is, uh, at the end, is uh, smoked prosciutto. So it's funny because I, I know prosciutto is not smoked. It's cured, right? Yes. It's dried. So S- it's, speck is smoked it's prosciutto. Smoked, so it has a little smoky. Uh, yeah, the flavor is smoky. If you want to test uh, I oh, have you it have here. It? Okay, here. Awesome. Of course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I know, the spread is amazing. And the orzotti? We use a lot of smoked things because the influence from North Europe and Austria is to smoke so we smoke cheeses, uh, uh, mozzarella, we smoke moza- mozzarella, we smoke r- ricotta, uh, yeah. prosciutto. Well, I don't think I've had smoked ricotta. Does it taste oh my like, God, really? you have to taste it, yeah. 
I have to find a good Italian like shop in LA. I know one, but there's I gotta, I'll mm. get some intel from you after. I wanted to start to smoke it at home because yeah. uh, it's difficult to find here. I've but never uh, had they, it. they smoke uh, ricotta. Uh, it's very popular in uh, my region and it's amazing. Wow, I bet. Mm. It sounds amazing. <laughs> so there's something about tomatoes that there's, the tomato base isn't as prominent or isn't as often used in your, that in Friuli, Friuli. Okay, tomato is most from south of Italy. Uh, culture and recipe. Obviously, we use it because right. we make yeah. uh, um, a brace, uh, <laughs> Yeah, but sauce. we don't use so much. We make a tomato sauce. We cook a lot of, with vegetables, but not so much to- tomatoes. We said we don't make a lot of red sauce. Right, you no, know, make a lot of red. Yeah, uh, it's more used in the coast because we have the mountain in the sea okay. uh, in our region, and uh, in on the sea when we cook like uh, seafood. Uh, recipe pasta with seafood mm-hmm. we use more yeah more of the more of yes, the tomatoes more than tomatoes uh, about barley we make uh, yeah what's the, the barley there's a it's very popular uh, we it would, says this is what it says as in the internet <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah it's because you can you know uh, in north of italy we use a lot of risotto so we, we eat pasta but we eat a lot of uh, rice and uh, we use barley like rice. So we make okay. risotto, uh, but with barley. Can it's you, the same process. Same process, still out of... Yes, very slow. Very slow, so. slow, slow. If you had a barley risotto and then a, was it rice risotto base, mm. blind taste test, mm. could you tell the, the, the flavor? Pro- yeah. Yes, and how, you taste how the would different. You felt? What would be the depth? First, the consistency, because the barley... You know, it's the rice is softer than the barley. I don't know, it's not a cereal. So <laughs> <laughs> the like, sauce can be the same, but like, the taste is a little bit different. It's more so. barley-ish, more. The barley is really good for health. Yeah, I would think so. I would think that the barley has more health benefits. Yes. We, we used to say that the barley clean the body. It's barley? So, yes, uh, it's cleaning. Uh, yeah. It's very digest. healthy. Yes. Do you think that the barley, this is, I mean, this is like a, do a question, but bar- the barley there in Frui mm. and even in Italy, the farming techniques, mm-hmm. the way the crop, the soil is, mm. is that a different barley in your, you know, mouth membrane of uh, taste memory than mm. when you have barley here? No, I found good barley you here. You found good barley? Yes, yes. Okay, so you can... I used to buy here and uh, it's really good. It's good. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you found your specific product. I barley. want to tell you that now in LA, you can find really good products. Uh, so I can, uh, when I came here first, uh, for me, it was very difficult to cook, uh, to recreate the same taste yeah. uh, and the same consistency and everything that I used to make in Italy. Uh, but now that I know where to buy, I can find everything. Do you have... Um, the only thing is the cheese. Is the a cheese. problem to find, uh, you know, because... We have this big tradition of uh, latteria cheese. It's, La- a, it's like a fresh cheese. Oh, yeah. That they mix in the mountain. It's kind of thing that you cannot find here. Yeah. But more or less, I can find everything. It's just some kind of fish and cheeses and yeah. salami. You cannot find good salami here. Yeah, it's, it's, good, it's hard to get a good salami, I yeah. find. Do you find that you have certain stores that are places that are Italian driven, Italian, or is it just regular? I'm just curious as to where. Alessandra Magnus from Frui Shops. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going crazy. So for, to make one dinner, yeah, okay, tell, tell I me. shop in six different places. I so I go in one place just to to buy, I don't know, the tomato sauce because I need it. Uh, another one to eat the pasta, another one for the rice, uh, another one for the prosciutto. I used to go in Italian dailies because they have uh, imported things uh, mm-hmm. that they're specific. Itali? Exp- Itali? Italy is really good. Here? Yes. Okay. Uh, in uh, Westfield, I go there. You know, it's... Uh, do you have any secret spots that people might not know? Like, do you ever go to Bay Bigs? Uh, can I say in name? Yeah, brand? Say Okay. Yeah. For example, uh, in Traders Joe, they have a lot of imported things. Yeah. Uh, and uh, because the owner is, I think, from Austria or from Europe. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, they have like... Um, uh, more or less 90%, uh, 100% of things imported. Oh, okay. And uh, also German style, they are similar mm. to the things that I can find in North, in North Italy. Mm. 
And uh, for example, they have a good, uh, I think the burrata is good. Uh, yeah, the burrata have, is good. Yes, uh, and the, the flour, make I bake uh, with okay. the flour. And there are a lot of good things. Okay. I go to Gelson for speck and yeah. prosciutto, yeah. for example, and smoked mozzarella. Yeah. They I have go- a, a import, they have good. Yeah, they have I, important. I like, yeah, Gelson's- I can't find Principe that is a brand from my region. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. But also they have others, they're yeah. really good. I go to all foods because the uh-huh. quality is really good for meat and seafood. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it depends because I have to have Italy or an Italian daily for a kind of uh, pasta. Yeah. They have a lot of, uh, or maybe if you need um, cookies uh, right. or um, uh, anchovies, right. uh, sardines, I think they are better. Yeah. I have to tell you that I used to buy only ingredients, not food already made. Uh-huh. So I make everything fresh. So yeah. I, I just talking about uh, yeah, for the ingredients. ingredients. Yeah. yeah, you buy everything. So this is actually before we get, I, there is one thing though. My about, dough is fresh. Your dough. Yeah, that's what I want to talk about. Like for, for example, the yeah. dessert, right? The, the For pizza and bread oh. is alive. So yeah. I have to refresh it every oh. week. Do you make the bread? Yes, sometimes oh, shit, it's, a lot. Yes. it's a lot of work, and it's the bread is such a lot of work, and I eat it so fast. Yeah, you know? pizza it's too. Like, everything pizza, you eat yeah. so fast. It's a lot of work. Everything, everything, so. and then you're yeah. it's eating, and you're like, that was over. That was eaten in one minute. Um, so I want to get into some other things, but first, let's talk, while we're on this subject of ingredients and sourcing and how you make all of your ingredients, let's talk about the store project. Okay, I'm private chef, so this is uh, like to treat. Different. It's a okay, pro- so we, we call different than we the call pro- we call project because it's not just one thing. We are very open to like uh, develop this uh, this idea uh, in many ways. For example, I'm sh- I'm private chef in uh, houses. Uh, I don't work uh, full time as chef because we want to have the the freedom to to collaborate with different houses uh, to do different events. But so the service is private chef. So people can call us for um, events, uh, birthday, for business dinner, and we go and cook. Uh, We decide to get at the menu. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also, I designed, because I'm also an architect and designer, I designed uh, a format of the table. So So this table right now is a little messy. I'm sorry, my cords. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, they can decide if uh, to have um, our style or they can use their um, their stove, their table, clothes, or what they have. Uh, but if they want, we can use our equipment. That is, uh, you mean the plates use... and the, you mean that type of thing? Yes, or, yeah. we have so plates, but it's like the setting is uh, original. We use uh, like a wood board. A wood board. Yes, yeah. white or uh, wood color, just yeah. natural. And uh, because I want to recreate uh, the, um, the idea of the osteria that mm-hmm. we have in Italy. Uh, but a little more chic. <laughs> <laughs> so they came mm. and call us and we organize, we go there, we cook, uh, we serve, that. we do everything. Wow. And you and your uh, husband? Uh, yes, me and my husband. And uh, we can also, we can, we have uh, people that help us. Uh, so I, if I was to have a, a I'm just going to set an example. So I clarify. So, um, so Christy and I say we're going to have a, uh, say 12 people. Okay, oh, to our the condo. perfect number to for our, us. I yes. think 12 is good. Yeah, we, but, we start from 6 to 20. Okay, so yes. say Small a dozen people, 12 people. Um, we're going to do a little, just a celebration, mm-hmm. a gathering. Yes. So I I contact you. Now, how do I? How does it work? Do I have a, a list of menu items that I could choose from? Or no, do I, we how create do, together. So, you, so we, everything is customized okay. uh, on you. So it's in, from the occasion. For example, you, you call me and we decide to get a budget. A budget, okay. Yes, a okay. budget. And uh, we talk about what, what is happening. For example, if it's a birthday of a person, we try to find the recipe that this person loves it. Oh, I love that. And we create a menu on this. So... Um, uh, then I, I make like a two, three different proposal. You can decide uh, and you can decide also if we have, uh, if to have our setting or mm-hmm. uh, yours. Uh. Right. Now we come, you don't have to do anything. I love that. Just come cook everything. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, my world just and opened. <laughs> usually guests love it because yeah. like to see how, uh, when I cook, it's, uh, it's beautiful. Yeah. 
we cook and we clean and then that's it. So it's also nice too when you're when you're entertain. entertaining. I mean, that's entertaining that the cooking, the, yeah. the aspect of it, but it's also great as a host that you don't have to mm-hmm. cook. You can at least no. engage with the guests. <laughs> the presentation, yeah, is, is good and everything is, uh, you know, also it's dependent from the situation. For example, we can also... Uh, talk about uh, the plates, uh, the culture, mm-hmm. uh, or not. Right. So, right. so I have a lot of people that call us and they love that we entertain. So when we come out with the plates, uh, we can explain the recipe or right. the tradition behind the plates. Yeah. Or if you want to have uh, like a business dinner, very formal, we can serve oh. and do everything super That's formal. Amazing. Yes, I love that idea. So- and once a month, uh, the other thing, we open our apartment uh, and uh, just for 10 people. Uh, used to, they can find uh, the ticket uh, on Meetup. Meetup. Okay. Meetup uh, or in uh, Facebook. Uh, or uh, under store? Under store project. Okay. Uh, okay. Most of them, they come from Meetup group. Uh, they can try our dinner for a, a good price uh, and they can meet friends. So yeah. we have an amazing group of people all the time. So it's always a little bit Yes, now different. they are becoming friends. So yeah. it's amazing. Nice. It's, Yes. You're going to have to add them. You're going to have to keep do more than once a month. <laughs> uh, okay. That's, we are talking about the future. <laughs> we would like to. We would like to make it this project bigger, especially because uh, our idea is to work also with other chefs. Sometimes we call other chefs, but we would like to organize this kind of meetup meet dinner for people more frequently and yeah. also with people from other regions, from chefs from other regions, um, but we don't have the place. It's such an interesting background. I'm trying to ping on your your personality or how you, your makeup. So you're architect. Yes. So you're very, and you're into design and mm-hmm. setting. Yes. I also work on a set designer for, um, a production designer for movies and yeah. theater, <laughs> music video. Yeah. You're busy. I'm so. bet- between design and food. Yes. <laughs> Are you a Cancer or a Virgo? No. Neither. Shit. Okay, I'm Capricorn? Between, between Libra and Scorpio. Oh, shit. I wouldn't have yes. guessed that. Yes. I was going to say Virgo. I was going to try to wait to the end and really get it. But then I'm like, you know, you could be a Cancer because Cancers are really into food. So My husband f- is Cancer. Is he is? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so food, really, yeah. most a lot are. And then I was thinking Capricorn because you have the, a, very, a discipline side mm-hmm. to you. Mm-hmm. So that would be like a... a but Virgo is because you're organized. Virgo is a very organized. I'm organized because, uh, you know, my background is like, I'm an architect, but I have also an MBA, so business administration. I so you have an MBA, master, architect. I'm a master in neuro-linguistic programming, oh second level. Wow. And I studied psychology for like, a, I'm continuing to study psychology because uh, I love it. Yeah. And I think that uh, first people has to be comfortable so right. the food has to be go- really good, uh, the presentation good, but everybody has to be happy yeah. at the end. So, so especially when they stop for a dinner, you know, yeah. you work all the time, all week. At the end, I want to go in a house. My husband is like me. So we have to go there and they have to be happy to have us, uh, to be comfortable. We have to be friendly, but at the same uh, time, we have to be very um, polite. And uh, so I think psychology is very important. Yes, that is. And so. anything in the I, the food industry, the restaurant, especially mm. the restaurant industry, mm. I always found that I would manage, I manage restaurants. I always found that the best people on my team were the ones that were like psychology majors <laughs> or, <laughs> or philosophy majors because they have this understanding of how yeah. people operate or they think about how, things like philosoph- philosophically. Or, so it's mm. so interesting how all of, so you have architect, culinary, MBA, MBA, psychology. <laughs> so you're, so out of all of this, so. I can match in, I match in everything together. Yeah. Between the hat of creativity. But. So I, exp- I explain myself. Uh, first, knowledge is important for everybody. So the knowledge that I have is just mine for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. So I read books, uh, I do, I learn every day. I never stop to learn. I, I explain uh, my creativity and my knowledge uh, through design and food. Design and food. That's yes, it. That's the it's way. That's merger. my passion. So. Yeah. <laughs> so when you, like this art on the wall here, did you did you do that? Yeah, did sure. You that? So mm-hmm. everything in this, where we're sitting, there's... Um, homemade. <laughs> homemade, yeah. So I'll, I'll have pictures on, on, the, on your webpage. 
<laughs> for, on my website for your show notes page, but there's the table that that kind of like intersects up against the wall <laughs> that's very colorful and it's super photogenic. Like when I took that picture, it was just so obviously it's p- completely purposeful. When we came in this apartment, I just came in and said, oh, I have to, to do a painting over there. So in like three hours, I made it. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, really, it is. So does your husband, is he, he's obviously involved in, in the business, um, yes. is he art, art driven or more culinary driven or what's his? My husband works a lot uh, on the organization of the dinner. So oh, okay. he's in charge uh, to take care of all the social media and the, uh, our clients. Uh, so he's the person to contact for everything. Okay. And um, uh, he helps me, of, of course, during the dinner to serve, uh, to organize, uh, but uh, he take care of all the clients and the guests. Oh, yes. that's, that's important. <laughs> it's funny when I look at, I was reading your bio on your website. So you are, this is the, if you're a, it's a sm- ex- small bio. <laughs> expert in strategic marketing design with a passionate curiosity for cooking. Her task is to bring the project originality with your unique style, engaging photos and innovative ideas. <laughs> yeah. Mm. And the SOAR project, it's the brainchild of Christian, was the, our first chef, uh, our friend. Then he decided to to don't continue this uh, this project because I have to tell you we're not living with this problem. We start just for passion. So to continue this project, we are just spending a lot of passion. So what patient? Pa- passion. Patient. Passion. Oh, passion. Passion. Okay, sorry. Sorry. So your shit, this is a passion project. Yes. It's a super passion because project. Because of course uh, we have to... I mean, it's a lot. You, yeah, we, 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 we have not investor. We, we just start from with our uh, resource yeah, and, then and then that's it with our ideas. So to continue to involve, it's a, it's a big work. It's a lot of work, right? I so mean, you have just to love it. So <laughs> at what point... That's, what has to drive, <laughs> that's the fuel that has to drive. You just have to... Everything else doesn't matter, right? It's yes. like that time, the money, the patience, the tolerance, the drive, the ups, the downs. You have to love. So, so <laughs> now we have just me and Gianluca. Okay. So okay. my husband and we are continuing our ideas. And uh, we want to create, uh, yeah, our, our dream is to create a place uh, where people can can come and taste uh, our dinner. Uh, so we can make it more, more dinner, yeah, more like meetup dinners. And, uh, and we are designing a new concept for okay. a, like, a, not a restaurant, but I cannot say anything right now. Oh, I can't say anything. <laughs> we'll have to do a part two then. But uh, something that at the moment... It, Exciting? Is, yes, but there is nothing like this in LA. I find that with the way that there's so much, you know, everybody's on the phone, like the, the non-connections... Mm-hmm that we have, it's based on social media so much, which I yes. do love social media because it has its benefits. Yes. However... We work only with social media, the yeah, end, because they call us because, because they right, see... Right, but that's how we connect. But yeah. but then there's this like lack of actually connecting. Like we're sitting down, you and I are sitting down and like in your home over, you know, a spritz, some delicious snacks, but we could be doing this over, you know, Skype or something, which mm-hmm. I do a lot. So people connecting isn't in person building community. And I feel like that's something that is, seems to be like a number one passion for you is the connection mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. It over food. Connection is very important for us. It's what uh, we are missing most. In the, um, right, because of the social media, right? That, and the kids and the... Yes, I, I, I can tell you that um, during our dinner, uh, nobody touched the, the, the phone. If they use the phone, it's just to make a picture of the food, but they talk a lot. Yeah. They spend like three, four hours sitting for a dinner. And uh, this one is... At your... At your that's our a, dinner, yeah, yes. Yeah, I love that. That's this, amazing. The best goal that we reached. So we are so happy because <sighs> people are happy. They can find friends. They talk about a very interesting thing. Mm-hmm. It's like a, a natural... Uh, <laughs> I think that the universe is mm-hmm. helping us because all the time we have an amazing group of people. They come like uh, from designer, mu- musicians, uh, uh, actors, a uh, mix of people. And we start to talk about food. At, at the end, we talk about life, uh, philosophy, <laughs> culture, books. It's so interesting. And so you feel so close. That there's a bond, right? It's over yes. food. It's a connection, which I think is something that is people yearn or looking for. Yes. Or w- they, maybe they traveled and they can 
uh, share their experience mm-hmm. in a country. So it's so beautiful. Mm-hmm. I really love it. Yeah. And it's an inspiration. And talking about psychology, we are very happy. So I'm a sensitive person. You can see because I love <laughs> yeah. flowers <laughs> <Yeah>. and heart. <laughs> uh, so all these things. So when I see people there, they are happy. I cry because I'm oh, so happy. Yeah. So yes. I love so, that. So, and, and this happens continuously. So I would like so to make it, it. Right. to open uh, to other people. So make it a little bit bigger just uh, to share this uh This more beautiful. often or bigger? <laughs> Do you know often, what I mean? <laughs> no, more often. More often. Yes. Bigger sometimes, like you were like tw- No, bigger the project. For, for us, it's like a bigger project because we're doing very little now because we don't have resource. But for right. us, it's uh, more often. So, because yeah. it's very important. Now we have people that, you know, our guests now, they are really friends. Yeah. They go to the museum together. They spend the oh. weekend in Santa Monica. Love I love it. Because it's like you the connecting. I other, love it. It's just, I love I that. I feel so well. Yeah. Yes. I love that. It's like, it's a great. Everything starts with the dinner. Yeah. But at the end. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Everything starts with the food and the spritzers. Yeah. There was something I wanted to talk to ask you about. There was going back to the sore. You were talking a, l- a little bit about the peasant culture. The, the real Italian traditions are based on a peasant culture and poor food now becoming very hard to find. Yes. With the introduction of moderns. Can, we, can you talk a little bit about that? I found that to be a really compelling or interesting thought. Okay. We, now the poor food is becoming the most difficult to find also in Italy. So it's What like... What do you mean uh, poor food? Like, um, poor ingredients. Uh, because the poor food, uh, it's now it, it's luxury food. Because, luxury, yeah. Yeah, because if you go in Italy, you want to find the antique recipe, you have to go in a, like in a luxury place uh, right. or in super old places in a small place, but it's so difficult to find. Wow. So the poor is just poor ingredients, but behind there is a lot of work. So maybe you start just with flour or uh, bread or um, poor because they didn't have money. So not a lot of meat because the meat was uh, expensive. Mm -hmm. Uh, The fish was expensive. So um, poor food is like uh, start with uh, things that you can find easily and cheap, like uh, I told you, grains, uh, Mm -hmm. flour, uh, bread, uh, um, cheap fishes like sardines, Mm -hmm. for example, that we have in our logo was very cheap. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of recipes with sardines. By the way, they are healthy. (laughs) And... um, And now we are losing our tradition in Italy too. So it's difficult to to, to find uh, the poor food because now you can find everything. Uh, You can find, uh, you know, also the, I think uh, the style of the food is becoming more uh, fusion everywhere in the world. So everywhere, right? So there's this, there's this, there's this like desire to, to maintain integrity with separation of regions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But as we keep assimilating or merging, some things are starting to get blended mm-hmm. or lost. And then maybe the people that hold the knowledge of the recipes yeah. or, or the hows, the generationally... Yeah. Is it passed down or is it, you know? We are all connected and uh, I think also chefs who used to travel and make experience everywhere in the world. So, of course, if you have creativity, if you have knowledge of different cultures, you want to create like fusion. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's really good. I think the best chef, they create new plates and uh, they create a very unique plates and original because they have the culture a big culture, mm-hmm. a big knowledge of uh, food from everywhere in the world. Talking about Italy, it's a little bit sad because it's difficult to find now really authentic places yeah. where you can find uh, the original recipe, traditional recipe. Uh, as a tourist, you cannot find a difference. You cannot just, I think, if you're really Italian. For example, in my region... There are like just one place that they make uh, baccala alla vicentina and oh, other yeah. things with the original recipe. Oh. And uh, I used to go there. Yeah. And then, but um, I don't know. I think the tradition now is uh, just in the families. Mm-hmm. 
week. So, so, so and I hope that women and men continue to cook. Yeah. Because I learned from my grandma, I learned from my yeah. mom, and uh, I like to to share. I like to share my recipe and my style and everything with other people because uh, to take care of our tradition, we have just to share. Yeah. You have to share. <laughs> I know. So it's, I find it to be interesting too because there's the there's the recipe of of you know the traditions of how one does things and pa- passing it on just through sharing that experience with Mm. generations. There's also an aspect too of farming, sourcing with the kind of agricultural technology. I don't know Mm. that's hit. For example, here you can have tomatoes all the time, or you can Mm -hmm. have certain products all the time, Mm. or you can grow things in different regions where maybe you weren't able to before. Mm. Has that really, has that from your knowledge affected recipes in the North of Italy, or is it still kind of a protected okay in italy doesn't exist this yeah so okay, you have so only it's, seasonal it's only seasonal and it stays so like that so the restriction that we have in europe but specifically in italy they are so high that you don't have to search organic food because there is everything so, is. <laughs> we have like a, if for one the production of one food for example here you have a 30 restriction in italy is 226 right. just to tell just, you okay. so they are so high that uh, the quality of the ingredients are really good is yeah. really good and um, i tell you here i buy only organic yeah, yeah. In Italy, I don't care. I go to the like farmers market. Yeah, yeah because that is like know. two, three times a week. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, and we don't now. Okay, you can find tomatoes uh, all the time in the year. We import food from other countries, from Spain, uh, mm-hmm. but uh, I used to find it seasonal. Seasonal, yeah. So it's pretty when much I came stay, here like... first, it was so funny <laughs> because you know, I, you see, okay, the weather is amazing, but uh, you can find all kinds of fruits and vegetables uh, all year. All, all year for yeah. me, it was so strange. Yeah. It was how is possible? <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, do you, I mean, LA, Southern, I mean, there are some seasonal, you know, the stone fruits, like the yeah. cherries are coming out and the peaches and the plums and all that. I use. Seasonal. Yes. I'm use, I like to use seasonal here. So yeah. I want to pretend that is winter. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. That's and funny. with more broccoli. Right. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. So I try to be seasonal. Yeah. Uh, Which, but here you can grow. I mean, there's, I have, a, I have a, a little garden and I feel like because we can grow every 12 months out of the year, because mm-hmm. there's no, you know, the East Coast has winter, you yeah. know, the Northern California, there's, gets cold and you, you can only farm maybe, yeah. you know, four to six months here. It's 12 months, you know, out of the year, which I'm assuming in Northern Italy is the same, right? Is it, what's the weather? But in there? Italy in general. But what's the weather in Friuli? I, I picture, is there a cliff? Is Friuli with, where the cliff, big cliff on the water? I just think of some pictures. No, we, didn't visit we, there no, we have there. a lot of beautiful beaches. There are a lot of tourists that come. So, because, uh, you know, it's close to, uh, is the, the to... same part of Croatia. Right. Okay. So it's the sea is yeah. the other part of it's Croatia. Croatia it's right across. Okay. That's the coast. The, yeah. the, the, you can go to the beach and. Uh, I just be... picture this. This, like when I look at wine, mm-hmm. white wine, some of the magazines, yeah, spectators and stuff. There was this cliff, and it was always in my mind branded with Frui. It, mm-hmm. Is there some type of like just like a a big cliff overlooking the water that's kind of famous no, no? okay no uh, okay that's famous in trieste trieste, trieste okay. yes do you know what I'm ta- it's like this it's just a picture yeah it's, the, it's famous because there is a castle yeah there's a castle up there. okay yeah, the yeah, tri- yeah. trieste okay. miramare castle okay yes okay so that's, that's not true. i was that's was... very famous and uh yes but we have uh, everything. So the sea with the beaches uh, you yeah. can go, and uh, hills and mountains. You can go to ski and you can go to the beach in the uh-huh. same region. Yes. Nice. So well, I will have a couple other questions for you before we get to your um, recipe. First of all, I'm excited to nibble on that. But second, <laughs> there's something we didn't get to. There was one thing about the grappa. Is grappa? Grappa. Okay, yeah. grappa. Another thing very famous. Uh, in Frui. Friuli. Friuli. Mm-hmm. Friuli. <laughs> so is there a grappa? Because I know in, Ven- in Veneto, there, mm-hmm. there's a grappa. I went on a tour. Grappa. There's a Prosecco Hills and then we went yes. to the grappa. And I got to tell you, I'm, I want to really love grappa. 
It's really, it's really freaking strong, right? I mean, it's like... It's strong, the white one. The white but one, you okay. can also have a different taste. For example, now I, it's possible to find grappa from Friuli here in oh, yeah? LA. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, I bought it. Also, Amaro. Yeah, Amaro. I like Dine. Amaro. Yeah, Me too. I love Amaro. It's more sweet. So. Yeah, it's a little more sweet. The original grappa is uh, it's strong and comes from uh, wines. Uh, yeah. That we call white grappa. White That's grappa. Where it's from. But you can find also with... Uh, Nuts, uh, with pears, uh, yeah. with uh, apples, uh, right, there's a lot of fruits. Uh, yeah, it mm. makes it softer. Especially in mountains, they make yeah. uh, their uh, homemade grappa. Yeah. It's made with uh, <laughs> flowers, uh, <laughs> herbs, uh, <laughs> Whatever is apples, out there. everything. So yeah. They make grappa with uh, peaches, everything. So, you, now, when you being from Italy, when you were younger growing up, was it different? Were you, how do I say this? There's not as many rules and laws that we have, like, okay, you're you know, you're six year, uh, 12 years old, you can't drink any wine. Mm-hmm. Like you can't, can't, can't like, mm-hmm. and I feel like Italy has so much culture with wine and, you know, the food and, you know, espresso and you, when you were younger, it was more part of your culture, your world, or yes. was it like a dividing line? Like, okay, now you're 21, you can now do this. Or You know, <laughs> my father, I, I tell you because it's funny. I think I, t- I, I taste grappa when I was six years old <laughs> for the first time. I say, taste it. I say, it's so bad. You know, it's too strong. So for us, is that it's like taste it. But if you want to drink a little bit, right. uh, eating. So it's not like drink because you want to be drunk. Yeah. It's just because, uh, you know, for us, for our cultures, like... Uh, it's so important, uh, the food and the wine, and that uh, it's uh, a moment of pleasure. So I have to stop uh, and taste and drink slowly. So, uh, for example, for me, with my parents, I never had problem because they never thought that I could be drunk or drink too much. Uh, yeah. For us, it's just a taste the wine because it's a, it's good. You have to taste the difference and then this come from this uh, region, the other from the other one. So it's like a, a culture. Yeah. It's I not think. it's not like drink. drink. Yeah. Yes. Like now I feel like there's such when there's restrictions, mm-hmm. like so much yes. consciousness of this restriction, then mm-hmm. it causes like this wave of you know, possible yeah. problem. I don't know. So I feel like in, in I mean the, of course there's problem. Everybody has the problems, difference but. between <laughs> wine beer and uh Super alcohol, for example, cocktails, you don't see very well if you drink cocktails. Young. Yeah. Uh, if you taste the wine, it's okay because yeah. they see that it's like natural. Yeah. Now um, it's becoming very popular, the homemade beer. Oh, yeah. A lot of, uh, they're opening new places uh, oh, where really? they make the and craft beer. So, oh, wow. That's interesting. Yes, that's a, a devolution of, uh, yeah. I think, of uh, where moving from wine to a new culture of beer. Interesting. Um, yeah, but... Yeah. So it's a, it's culture. For us, it's culture. Everything's it's culture. Not, yes. It's not that you need to... Of course, you cannot buy a bottle of wine or beer if you're 16. Right. Of course. But uh, if you just taste a dinner, you can drink a little bit, yeah. not a glass like here. Right, right. I already drink First, wine. First, we drink... Uh, <laughs> Uh, I don't have free, two free hands. That's why mine's got, my spritz has gotten first, up. <laughs> first, the quantity here is double that we have in Italy. So if you order a glass of wine here, yeah. it's double that we used to have in Italy. Oh, that's good. You mean like the ounces? You mean how much you yes, pour? Oh, yes. here. So I was, for example, if I order a glass of wine, I can, I can take it for two hours. Yeah. Because never finished. It's six ounces versus the... It's too much. Yeah, yeah. It's double. Before we get to your recipe, there's in Veneto, Venice, there's the, gosh, what are they called? The chichetti, the, everything's little, like the little every, people meet. Cicchetti. 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 Yes. I love those places, Cicchetti. Mm-hmm. It's like it's the tapas meeting. in Spain. Right that, <laughs> right. But there's a meeting place and there's always, yes. it's Prosecco. And Cicchetti. And, just, and everything, <laughs> Cicchetti, everything like a, with toothpicks, everything's kind of yes. smaller. I love that concept. And I find it's only in Venice or is that spread to other? The name of Cicchetti is only in Venice, Venice. Uh, because they're popular. Uh, it's like a quick place. Yes, is quick People m- meet up and they have. The, the, uh, okay. We used to have small things, also the pastries and everything. Oh, so yeah. we, we eat uh, um, um, very um, small quantity of food. So a small, we eat pasta every day, but 
a small uh, quantity. Right, not like this big ass. When bowl. we go out <laughs> for a pi hour or we want to drink a coffee with a little pastry, it's mini. So we, mignon, we, we have everything mignon. Mignon. And uh, I do here too. I'm doing here. Yeah. If they call me because they want a bites or like a little buffet. I like I, bites. I like bites. I yeah. love the bites. I make it. Yeah, that's so good. And I can't yes. wait to come to one of your... <laughs> I'm serious. I'm so yes, excited. I, I really am. Soon, so. I think probably we can do it uh, in one, two weeks. Uh, we yeah. can have um, a mid Wiener in July for sure. Okay, perfect. I want to go to Italy so bad right now after talking <laughs> about it. And I think I'm going to be transported. I am already with the spritz and then I have, we have this delicious, delicious treats you made. But I know that you want to um, share a recipe that I asked you to have something that you're going to share. And I feel like I need a drum roll because I feel like it's the a never revealed no. ever top secret. This is it. Just to tell you, I shared with my sister last week. <laughs> okay. Can okay, I, I'm this is a secret of recipe oh my of God, my famous secret. crostata. <laughs> do you mind if I do this? Okay. 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 Um, crostata is a, a tart that uh, we used to make and we used a lot in, uh, in Italy, northeast of Italy. Um, we can use, uh, you make a dough and you can use a marmalade. I like peach, but you can have a strawberry or what you like. So the dough is secret because every everybody that tastes it say, oh, this is so good. I never taste like that because it changed the, the original recipe a little bit. <laughs> so, ready? Okay, I'm ready. Okay. And is this the one that's over here? Two, yes. Okay. You want to show? Yeah. Two cups of flour. Okay. Uh, then I have to read because yeah. I have to be sure to not do mistake. Two cups of flour, half cup of sugar, one egg. Um, you know now the problem is grams and tablespoon. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, unsalted butter. Unsalted? Like, uh, yes. Like 150 grams of uh, unsalted butter. Okay. okay. The really secret is that I used only the Italian yeast. Yeast? So, yeast. Yeast. Yes. Okay. Raising. Uh, I use an imported uh, Pane degli Angeli. Ooh. Yeast and vanilla flavor. Say it again. Pane degli Angeli. Okay. Um, and I use like um, a teaspoon of that. Okay. And you can add a little bit of uh, vanilla extract or uh, um, the, um, the skin of the lemon. What's okay, the, the zest, the, the zest yes, or the, a little bit, yeah. yes. Then you mix everything. If it's too dry, you can add a little bit of milk or almond milk. Put in freezer 10 minutes. Then you take out and uh, then you make it. Just add... Um, so how long does that to make you, take for you to make? Okay, to make the dough... 10 minutes. 10 minutes. 10, 15 but minutes. You've done it before. Then you put in refrigerator 30 minutes or in uh-huh. freezer 10 minutes. And you make it and then you cook for uh, 30 minutes, 350 degrees. Okay. It's very simple. But the, the big difference is the dough. But, you know, I I think the, the, the secret is the... Is the, the yeast. Wo- and the love. <laughs> it's Pana it's the Angeli. Love. <laughs> Pana Dan, but it's also the love. So what's the official name of this dessert? Crostata di pesche. Pesche? It's like peach. Oh, okay. I thought pesche was it Because it's, mar- it's peach marmalade. Oh, okay. But the name is Crostata. Crostata. All right. Mm. I'll turn that off there. I know. And That's if, if you add a little bit of whipped cream on the side, oh, it's yeah. to die the for. best. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank and you to you. That was awesome. I'm excited to indulge in some of this uh, snacks that you made. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Hey, everybody. I hope you enjoyed listening to that episode. And again, please rate and review if you did like this podcast episode or any of the other ones. Please go to iTunes download rate review i appreciate that very much just forking around podcast and again i am debbie salzberg my handle on instagram is at forking podcast my website is just forking around.net and i am so excited to have you on board here with me on the just forking around podcast and i look forward to seeing you on the next show